Okay, it has taken me months to perfect a vanilla cake recipe and I've finally done it. Introducing to you my new super soft vanilla cake that is packed with flavor while still being fluffy and light. So to start off, you wanna preheat your oven to 165 degrees Celsius with the fan on and grease or line two eight inch cake tins. I'm using some homemade cake release today to grease my tins, which I absolutely love and it saves so much time. Once that's done, set your cake tins aside and in a bowl you want to sift together your dry ingredients. So I've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of corn flour, also known as cornstarch, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And then using a whisk, just mix that all together until well combined. You can also use cake flour in replacement of the all-purpose flour and cornstarch. Okay, set that aside for later, and in a large bowl, you wanna add in half a cup or 113 grams of room temperature unsalted butter, half a cup of unflavored vegetable oil, and one and two thirds of a cup of white granulated sugar and then using a hand or stand mixer on a medium high speed, cream that together for about two minutes until it's light and fluffy. Okay, so once your mixture looks like this, the next thing that you wanna do is turn your mixer to a low to medium speed and crack in three eggs one by one, mixing well in between each addition. So about kind of 10 to 15 seconds in between each egg. Now once all your eggs are mixed in, just give your bowl a little scrape down just to make sure everything's mixing well. Then you wanna add in one and a quarter tablespoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of white vinegar, and a half cup of buttermilk, and then mix that in until well combined. Now what you wanna do is set your mixer aside and then the rest of the mixing is going to be done by hand. So add in half of your pre-mixed dry ingredients from earlier and gently fold that in until just combined. It's okay if there's kind of a few little bits of flour showing through. Then you wanna add in a further one cup of buttermilk and gently fold that in until just combined and then finish off by folding in the remaining dry ingredients until just combined. You don't wanna overmix the batter, so only mix until all the flour has disappeared and then stop there. So this is what your batter should look like. And now the last step is to evenly distribute this into our two pre-prepared cake tins. You can totally use a scale to weigh your cake tins just to make sure that you know they're evenly distributed if you're not comfortable with eyeballing it. Now I'm just flattening the tops of my cake layers and then giving my cake tins a little bang just to get rid of any large air bubbles. And now these are going to go into the oven for 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cake layers are done now. They've been cooling in the pans for about 15 minutes. And now I'm just running a thin knife along the edges of the pan to release the cakes from the cake tins and then turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. Oh my God, these smell so good. And just look at how soft these cake layers are. Now, while our cake layers are cooling, let's make a super easy buttercream. So to my stand mixer, I'm adding in one and a half cups or 340 grams of room temperature unsalted butter, three cups of icing sugar, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and one and a half tablespoons of milk. You can also use a hand mixer for this, but this frosting does require a little bit of mixing, so I'm going with the easy option. And then using my paddle attachment, I'm first mixing everything together on the lower speed, just so that my icing sugar doesn't fly everywhere. And then once things are kind of mixed together, I'm turning up the speed to a medium high, and then letting this mix for a full 10 minutes scraping down the bowl about halfway just to make sure everything's mixing well. By letting this mix, it's going to lighten up your buttercream in both taste and texture and help get rid of some of that grittiness that American buttercream kind of usually has because of the icing sugar. And that is it, a super easy, not too sweet American buttercream that has a gorgeous smooth texture to it. Okay, now we are on to the fun part, which is the decorating. So to start off, I'm trimming off the little brown bits around my cake layers, purely for aesthetic purposes, so I can have a nice thumbnail. So if you don't wanna do this step, you can totally skip it. Next, I'm placing my first cake layer straight onto my cake stand and topping it with a generous amount of frosting and then smoothing that out with my offset spatula. Then my second cake layer goes on top of that and again, I'm just placing some buttercream on the top and then smoothing it out with my offset spatula. 
Now I'm just going to use any excess frosting on the sides to cover the entire cake in a thin layer of frosting, which is what we call a crumb coat. This is going to trap all the crumbs before we place our final coat of frosting on top. Okay, that is my crumb coat done, and now this is going to go into the fridge for 30 minutes to firm up. Once the crumb coat is firm, I'm applying another layer of frosting all around the cake, starting from the top and then moving to the sides. And then I'm using my cake scraper to scrape the edges so that they're nice and smooth. Now to get some sharp edges on the top, I'm just slowly bringing my offset spatula into the middle of the cake as it catches that top lip of frosting around the edges. Now to finish off, I'm just going to do some really simple piping. So I'm just filling a piping bag with a 1M star tip on it. And then I'm just doing some little swirls on the top of my cake. And that is it, my vanilla cake is all done. This cake is honestly so incredibly moist and soft. It has such a tender crumb to it. And because it's vanilla, you can literally pair it with any flavor frosting or filling. Mmm, so so soft. That is a good vanilla cake. If you try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next video.